On the north shore of Oahu, four of Hawaii's leading surfers are just hours away from paddling out to compete at surfing's ultimate proving ground, Pipeline. This is a place where surfing is carved into the identity of those raised along the world's most legendary of coastlines. Victory at this most coveted wave remains the ultimate accolade in any surfer's career. Jamie O'Brien's expertise in the barrel is notorious throughout the surfing world. The Vulcan Pipe Pro could serve as a chance for him to cement his name as one of Pipeline's all-time greats. Everybody wants that wave. It's crazy. Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes competition's not fun. But at the end of the day, you still want to get the best waves. For Rothman, he has displayed exceptional promise in a short space of time. Will he be able to apply this potential to the arena of competition and continue his upward trajectory? Every day we surf it, there's at least 100 guys out. And you get that contest, and you get to surf it with three guys out. For Ezekiel Lau, there is no greater goal than to represent Hawaii on the Elite World Tour. A strong result on home turf is essential if he's to build momentum at the start of a grueling qualifying season. I still feel like I'm always fighting to you know, keep my rank in the pecking order. You know, that's what makes it so good. That's what makes having a contest there so prestigious. Kalani Chapman's lifetime devotion to the waves of the North Shore has seen him become a standout in the world's most ferociously competitive lineups. Can he translate this status to a much desired win at Pipeline? This is really huge for me. It's really important for me to do well in this event. I mean, just to get in it was huge. As fans await the imminent start of the 2015 competitive season at the world's most famous wave, and as the surfers make their final preparations, this is their story. It's another winter's day on Hawaii's fabled North Shore. Across the stretch of coast known as the Seven Mile Miracle, surfers hunt down the waves of their lives at one of the numerous world-class breaks on offer. However, for Jamie O'Brien, days like this offer up many more opportunities than just conventional surfing. We try and wake up every morning thinking, what is the ocean gonna offer us? We just feel off each other's fire. Kalani gets amped, I'm getting amped, Jamie's amped. Every day we try and use the ocean as our playground. Jamie pushes it to the limits for sure. Oh, here we go. This is where the fun happens. We have a whole ton of fun on these boards. Yeah, we just like to do like a bunch of fun stuff. This one's got straps. I don't know why. I mean, we got everything from boogie boards to soft tops to, you know, we got our diving gear, we got our wave house boards take the sub squatch out and take the stand up paddle out with the chair on it. At my house, when everyone comes together, our minds start turning. We're like, what are we doing today? Like someone's more excited than someone. I like to take advantage of uh, the ocean when it offers you so many opportunities in life. Growing up here on the North Shore every day, I know what day offers what. O'Brien and his friends have built a reputation for their exploits in the water across the North Shore. This daily exposure to being in the lineup has led to O'Brien having a comfort level in the water that few can emulate. I feel that you know, all my time I spent in the water here, it, it pays off. You know, I see waves, I read waves. I'll ride anything on it. It's just, it's a challenge. And I got the lineup down, and I think that's what really matters. Yeah, it's definitely good training. When the waves get big, you know, you're, you're ready. It's a battle out there. Sometimes it's our playground, sometimes it's our worst nightmare. You know, surfing pipeline, it's almost like jumping off a 10-foot building straight on the concrete. And the power of the wave, it, it just crushes you straight into the reef. With a little over a week until the Vulcan Pipe Pro, O'Brien would experience the dangerous face of Pipeline firsthand whilst attempting an aerial maneuver. 
I just felt my leg burn. I was like, well, maybe it's not that bad. So then I feel, and the whole finger goes straight inside my cut. And I was like, oh, this is a big cut. I look back, big gaping hole. I was like, I gotta go in right now. Wave into the lifeguards. I got about nine stitches. They stitched the muscle back together. That was that far from cutting my Achilles tendon. After being out of the water for a few days and with a perfect swell hitting pipeline, the temptation proves too much and O'Brien makes a return to his place in the lineup. The doctor told me don't go in the water. So, you know, it's kind of playing with fire, you know. Fortunately, I paddled out and got a couple sick waves. I was super stoked. Took a couple of bad wipeouts, but at the end of the day, I, I needed that. I, I need to go surfing. Days after O'Brien's decision to get back in the water, speculation begins to mount across the North Shore about a giant swell that is quickly approaching. Basically, you know you're, you're in for it when there's this low pressure scraping across the Pacific Ocean. It almost takes up the whole thing. Like, this is going to be a big swell, and we're going to have perfect winds. I'm getting all freaked out talking about it. It's rare that you get big waves with light winds because usually big, big storms create big waves. So we hope we're pretty pumped, man. It's, it's on. It could be pipe in the morning. You never know, you know? Yeah. Just because it says something on the charts doesn't mean that that's how it will play out. But it gives us a good idea of what's going on. We're going to get big waves tomorrow. As the sun rises, the swell has arrived. For the surfers, the day ahead will bring some of the largest waves to hit the North Shore this winter. Wave of the winter, two days. Kept waking up through the night and uh, calling the buoys to see how big they were, and um, they were jumping up every few hours, like massively. Figure out a game plan since pipeline isn't isn't doing what it should be. There's gonna be some super good rides today, though. It's gonna be insane. When a big swell hits the North Shore, there are numerous different spots offering waves. And for Kalani Chapman, a quick decision must be made about where to surf. Well, there's so many good big waves on the North Shore when a big swell comes. It's hard to be everywhere at once. A lot depends on the wind, because wind and big waves don't really mix. So ended up going to Waimea. Waimea Bay, surfing's original big wave spot a treacherous place where the pioneers of the sport would lay the foundation of what's possible in big surf. Well, when it comes to Waimea, there's a lot on the table. It's not like it breaks all the time. So when it does, it's nice to be on it and be out there when it's breaking. This is a place where legends are made and where one wave can thrust a surfer into the spotlight. But a dangerous gauntlet faces those looking to earn one of the precious few waves that pass through. I'm humbled whenever I paddle out to YMA, you know, like it's adrenaline rush right when you leave the beach. You know you're dealing with shore break. Then you make it past the shore break and you gotta get out to the lineup. And when you get out there, there's like 60 dudes with 10-foot boards and you know there's a lot of traffic out there. So I sat around being patient. I watched some of my friends get good waves and then Sure enough, the set that I wanted came. I was stoked that the swell was actually big, you know, considering the, the Balkum contest is a week out. So keep the ball rolling and stay in rhythm. And, you know, that's a good thing to, to have for the contest. You know, you want to have a good rhythm. It's a very powerful, dangerous wave. You know, it can it can hurt you. I love surfing it though. You know, my family's surfed it, my brother, my uncles. I'm always stoked to back up the family name and get some good waves.
With a few days until the Vulcan Pipe Pro, Ezekiel Lau is on the North Shore visiting coach Dave Riddle. Dave Riddle has been my coach since I was nine years old. Everything I learned was from him and he taught me everything from the North Shore to contest stuff and you know he pretty much groomed me into the surfer I am today. For Lau, the Vulcan Pipe Pro is the start of consecutive qualifying events that will take him to Australia immediately after completing the contest of Pipeline. Today the pair are going over Lau's final preparations ahead of this grueling schedule. So you ready to go? Yeah. Boards, everything, quiver, everything? Yeah. Boards come on Monday for Oz and I'm going to just try them out next week and stuff. I think my flight's like for the 7th, but the contest is in <laughs> to the 8th. Yeah. But, but if I'm in the final and then it's the last day, I'll change it. You're going to go literally bruh, from really good, well, hopefully, hopefully good pipe. really decent pipe or at least waves of, you know, power and consequence and then mm -hmm. get on the plane and land and go straight into what could be one to two feet. And that's always hard for you guys, but the main thing is your quiver's ready for pipe and then you're going to take an exact opposite quiver to Oz. Yeah. 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 Robbers the, and everything. So that quiver's pretty much made. I, I was trying it this, this whole week, the pipe quiver. So with that new quiver and the different swell directions we've been getting lately, which way are you feeling best right now, back door or backside? I don't know. The last couple of days were all backdoor days because it wasn't that big. Yeah. But uh, today, I don't know, it was messy and it was everywhere. So I, I rode my bigger one, the 610. The swell's super crossed up, so there's like peaks everywhere. And yeah. You got to pick the right one. But, yeah. you know, the mentality, you know it is that we could have a contest day just like that. Yeah, so. yeah no, that's why. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Good to go. With the qualifying season upon him, Lau must align his focus to achieving strong results if he's to stand a chance to be among the small number of surfers who will be on the Elite World Tour in 2016. Hey, there's over a thousand guys trying to do this QS system right now. And I want to say between 10 and 12 guys come out of there every year. No doubt about it, it's really difficult. I deserve it. I mean, I've worked for it. and. That's where I want to be, and it'll be me achieving my goals. But we're not going to stop there. You know, winning is a privilege, and if I put in the work, then winning would just be a plus. Zeke's a really good kid, and he's got a heart of gold. But you put a jersey on him, and bang, it changes. It's like a lot of guys in the NFL and the NBA. Like, you know, they're the most quiet, spoken guys you've ever met. But put a helmet and a jersey on, and the horn goes off, and they're animals. You know, every day I wake up and I'm pretty much in a jersey. I run heats through my head all the time, different scenarios. So, you know, when that day comes when I put on a jersey, it's, it's nothing new. I mean, I've, I've put in the work. That whole mindset never changes for me. He's a super competitive guy and he loves to win and put the jersey on. And I think it's Zeke's time now. A pilgrimage to Hawaii's North Shore is at the top of every surfer's travel list. However, for Koa Rothman, these waves are his backyard. We're actually right in front of my house at Backyards. Backyards is right here. Um, that's Phantoms, Freddy's, and then VLAN. It's actually where I learned to surf. Rothman would be exposed to the North Shore's heavy surf as a very young kid by his father, North Shore legend, Eddie Rothman. The thing that sticks out in my mind the most when he was really young at two years old, I took him out of sunset, the waves were coming up, and my friend tells me, use this bigger board than I usually lose it, use, and it's wider, right? So we caught a wave, and it had water wings on them, and I was paddling back towards the point, and this wave came sideways and caught me, flipped us, and the board was like too wide, right? So I just, whatever happened, I didn't grab him. And I looked back, and I didn't see him. And I'm looking, and I'm looking into the sun, and I see the water wings and no kid. So I went, well, there's only one place he can be is on the bottom, and the waves are picking up and it's washing around. And I could see him on the bottom going like this, crawling like this. And I went, oh, I had nightmares about that long time. I just grabbed him, picked him up, and he goes, oh, dad, my water wings. My water wings, my My whole career is probably because of my dad and the way he raised me. 
I was in the water every day of my life. He always kept us really active and he gave us probably the best life for me and my brothers that we could ever ask for. With an ingrained feel for the big waves of the North Shore, Rothman's path would naturally lead him to surfing some of the world's most dangerous big wave spots as opposed to traditional competition. I mean, you can surf a contest and you can make $100,000 at Huntington Beach doing a wing wang on a ding dang this big. Somebody just rode a 50 foot wave, risked their life and got 12,000 for first place. Yeah, what's going on here? I did contests when I was like a little kid, like NSSAs and Haases and stuff, and it just wasn't really my thing. And I always liked surfing bigger waves that were a lot better than little contest waves. I just kind of started really pushing myself to surf bigger waves, and it turned into a career. Still a little scary. Like when they go to Jaws, I've never gone and watched any of my kids surfed it. No way. You know, it's kind of like, hey, I don't want to be there. I don't want to see nothing I can do. It's a trip, you know. It's a matter of you're proud on one hand, but you're still scared on the other hand. Like, look at this thing. Oh my God, you know. Despite not being a regular at surf contests, Rothman still goes into the Volcom Pipe Pro as a favorite. At a young age, he's already managed to establish himself at the notoriously hostile environment of Pipeline's lineup. When I first started surfing pipe, and I was talking to Jamie, he's like, you just gotta be out there every single swell, no matter how it is, how like wonky and doubled up and gnarly it is, you just gotta be out there and make sure people recognize you. And you just gotta charge, even if it's not a good one, or a closeout, like, just go. You gotta have some skills. It's an easy place to really get hurt at, you know? The way that I guess he did it was, he just takes off as far back as you can get on the smallest board you can ride. You get a lot of respect like that, like, oh, did you see that wave out? Did you see him make that wave? You know, it's like, it's a gladiator pit, you know? And you can't fake it. You can't fake it at pipe. With storms brewing in faraway parts of the Pacific Ocean, swells relentlessly march toward the break at Pipeline, expiring as perfect barrels on this deadly reef. These very waves will serve as the canvas for those who put their bodies on the line in the name of competition. For O'Brien, a lifetime spent on the North Shore has cultivated an assured nature in the water that few have previously attained. Beneath the surface of his carefree nature lies a ferocious competitor eager for further success, and to lay claim to becoming the greatest pipeline surfer of his generation. The one thing that bothers me is I hate losing, and I want it more than they want it. They want it more than I want it, and it's just like, it's crazy. For Lau, he finds himself at the start of a demanding year-long journey in his bid to qualify for the world tour. Whilst his appetite for competition is without question, Will desire and hard work convert to results and points? Will he rise to the challenge and make his bid to surf among the world's best? Everything in my life I've had to work for. I mean, going into this year, I really want to make a real hard push. That's one of my goals, but we're not going to stop there for sure. As for Chapman, with grade A credentials at the famous left-hander, his proven track record at Pipeline is well documented. But can he ignite the competitive fire that burns within him? I got a lot of um, weight on my shoulders right now, it feels like, but it's not nothing I haven't felt before. I just want to be able to represent Hawaii and do good in front of my family and friends. Meanwhile, Rothman has nothing to lose. On a career path many would consider a dream job, his trajectory toward big wave surfing fame is well on course. But on one of the few occasions he pulls on a contest vest, perhaps this very fact could help him claim a pipeline title. Contest at Pipe, it's just, it's a different feeling, but I would love to win. When the buzzer goes for the first heat of the Vulcan Pipe Pro, what has gone before will count for little. What matters will be the pure surfing skill required to master Pipeline. Few have it, many wish they did. And if Mother Nature has her way, one of the greatest surfing shows on Earth will commence. <laughs>